familiar with the uh, Southern California mushrooms and plants, but also the prosmos of North America is a real expert. So he's going to uh, talk about mushrooms as well as what's going on in the environment, maybe sort of behind the scenes that probably you might not really consider when you're walking through the forest. And I think it's quite pretty interesting. So uh, without further ado, take it away. Thank you, Brent, and thanks for inviting me to the festival. And this is a great fun. Yeah, for Herman's uh, experiencing the, the downside of the fungi. Wherever there's organic material and moisture, it could be fungi. This is a news clipping that uh, was published in Santa Barbara News Press. My son was living in this apartment, and uh, we went over to see this big oak that had fallen on his apartment, and that's his roommate there, the guy on the left. He was having coffee, watching TV when this and he got up to go to the kitchen and pour another cup of coffee. The oak tree fell through the house and crushed the chair he was sitting in and the TV he was watching. And uh, I found out later he was supposed to be in class at City College, but he was cutting class. So that's a good lesson to, to go to class. Uh, anyway, this tree had heart rot. That's a different tree, but same idea. It had heart rot um, where the heartwood is supposed to be protective with the tree. It's got you know tannins and other chemicals, but in this case, uh, in, in many cases, trees fall because of heart rot, because it's structural damage and that takes the structural uh, mechanical support out of the tree. So, you know, we, as mycologists and, and me included, have just kind of said, well, these fungi must be able to, to uh, decompose wood, and we, we kind of let it go at that. But I've always been interested in decomposition and the mechanisms of decomposition, and it's more complex than we think. And you know, I love this H.L. Mencken quote, for every uh, complex problem, there's a, an answer that is, what is it, simple, uh, clear, simple, and wrong. So the real mechanism of decay is much more complex. So we're gonna talk about uh, the fungi in terms of the five kingdom system. Uh, the plants, the animals, the fungi are multicellular kingdoms. The, uh, the plants uh, gain their uh, nutrition by uh, photosynthesis, the animals by eating, ingestion, and the fungi by absorption. There's two uh, unicellular kingdoms, the protists and the bacteria. So five kingdoms in, in all, and the fungi make up a, a huge important kingdom, and we all understand how important they are, but hardly anyone does. You know, I talk to people say, yeah, I'm a botanist, and they go, that's plants, right? And I say, yeah, my, my specialty is mycology. They don't even know what we're talking about. And then when I say that's fungi, they say, you're interested in, in fungus? I mean, they, they don't get it. But everybody here, of course, does. Um, so um, absorption is the mode of nutrition. And we look at the body of the fungus, which is a mycelium of hyphae. And um, in the microscope, that's all there is. They're a very simple body plan. Uh, the very high surface to volume ratio, almost like bacteria. Uh, they live within their food source. They, they, they can't eat, there's no stomach, there's no mouth, there's no hand to grab it and teeth to chew it. There's, there's nothing but mycelium, but hyphae. So they have to grow within their substrate and they secrete their enzymes outside of their bodies, exoenzymes. And they have a vast array of digestive enzymes. And unfortunately, they like the same foods we do, and, and some that we don't, like, uh, like wood, essentially, wallpaper that's made out of fiber, uh, dung. I wonder if that's elephant dung, I don't think so. Did you hear Gary's lecture this morning? That was great. But there's lots of mushrooms that grow on dung, and it, it's basically wood. Um, lignin and cellulose are the lignocellulosic units of wood. So this is a brown rod. But let's talk about uh, other uh, ways, other organisms that use wood, termites do. And people would think, well, they must have the enzymes that, that can, can decompose wood. But they don't really. They have bacteria that live in their gut that decomposes the wood. Uh, cows, same thing, horses, they eat this grass, this, this wood stuff, but they, but they can't uh, digest it without the bacteria that live in their stomachs. Uh, snails, as it turns out, do have cellulose enzymes, they have cellulase. So they can actually digest the wood. And I think about this all the time. If you had cellulase in your system, um, we don't have it, so we can't digest it. But if you did, 
instead of you know picnicking on the grass, you could you could picnic on the grass actually. Wouldn't that be an interesting way of life? So um, we're going to talk about the carbon cycle and saprotrophism. Sometimes it's called saprophytism, but uh, troph means feeding. So they feed on dead uh, organic material. So we can see these leaves in the forest with the mycelium. We can see wood with the mycelium. These beautiful radiating patterns of the mycelium. Uh, this, this leaf litter being held together by mycelium. It's all un undergoing decomposition. So here's the carbon cycle in, in very quick. There's a, a, a reservoir of CO2 in the atmosphere and photosynthesis is occurring all the green plants, and it's fixing that CO2 into sugars. And the, of course, the plants are growing, and their horses are eating the plants, and that sugar is being passed around. Photosynthesis is where it's being fixed, of course, and respiration is where it's being taken apart, and that CO2 is being replaced into the, into the biosphere. So all of us, uh, of us um, respire and put that CO2 back. Combustion is a way of putting it back much more uh, Quickly. Decomposition by fungi puts it back in their respiration, and they're also all that organic material, that fabric of life, <clears throat> those minerals are being returned to the soil and they can be reused. So there's that, that other side of life, which is the, the death part of it that's recycling all those materials. We couldn't be here without them. There's a limited amount of CO2, it's stuck up in the atmosphere. We got to get it back there. Um, but Decomposition is very difficult because lignin and cellulose are really reluctant, re recalcitrant to, to decay. So the lignin ends up being um, sequestered in the soil and turning into humus. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there is some carbon sequestration that's going on all the time. So um, the fungi are pretty good at it, but, but not perfect, we'll see. So photosynthesis is, is that carbon fixation, and the chloroplasts are doing it. So the uh, water and oxygen are, are being, sorry, water's coming in, oxygen's being produced, and carbon dioxide's coming in and being fixed into sugar, into glucose. And it's a six carbon sugar, and it's forming into two parts, alpha and beta, which are differing only in the position of that one little hydroxyl group. Not important, just, the, it, it is important um, uh, to a biologist, because alpha glucose makes starch, beta glucose makes and glycogen, that's how animals starch. And uh, beta glucose makes cellulose and hemicellulose for plants. So it's the same photosynthetic product that goes two directions. Starch for all the food in the world, for all of us, and cellulose and, and hemicellulose for a plant. Okay, starch we know is easy to get to. We all have those enzymes. And if we look at how starch is degraded, just to give you an idea how these enzymes work, they're hydrolytic, which means they, they stick a water molecule and they, they like right there at that yellow arrow, this enzyme takes that double chain apart. And then this enzyme goes in there and, and knocks those bonds apart by adding a water molecule. And then this enzyme can do one at a time and just take all those apart like that, and make them all single. And then this enzyme, Maltase can take those disaccharides and break those apart. So we started with this big complex polysaccharide called starch, and we break it apart and make single glucose units. <clears throat> That's what we're going to do with cellulose, but it's much harder. So here's, you know, everybody can do starch. All the fungi, all the animals, we can all, we all have those enzymes. Okay. So back to starch. Now here's cellulose. Look at how much more complex it is. And if I really showed an accurate drawing of cellulose, it would go back into the, into the screen and come out. It's a big, and it's crystalline. It's so, and it's got these hydrogen bonds, and it forms this crystalline structure. So those enzymes can't get in there, like the starch enzymes can't get in there to decompose it, to start hydrolyzing it. So uh, glucose, uh, sorry, cellulose is made by the cell wall. And these microfibrils, you can almost see them in the diagram of the cell wall there. The membrane makes the cell wall. The membrane is made of lipids and proteins, and those little, those little those cylinder things, that's an enzyme called starch, sorry, cellulosynthase. 
So all the glucose, the beta glucose goes in there and it extrudes these lines of microfibrils. So the cell makes the cell wall, the membrane makes the wall by polymerizing the cellulose. And they do that by removing a, a molecule of water. So it's a dehydration synthesis. So here's one of those uh, um, a diagram of what the microfibrils might look like with the cellulose all in bundles, and then hemicelluloses, which are um, they're matrix sugars. They're like glues, and they hold those microfibrils together. They cross-link them. And then there's this other molecule called lignin. And lignin is a phenolic compound. Much more on lignin to come. It's really hard to decompose. It strengthens the wall, adds rigidity to the wall, and it also protects the cellulose from, um, from uh, anyone who would try to destroy that cell wall. So it's a protective molecule. So we see the fungus here de degrading the leaves, and we see that mycelium there the yeast is a fungus, and you can also see on the yeast kind of what looks a little bit like microfibrils. Well, they have a wall too. Uh, why don't the enzymes that they use to digest the leaf, why don't they digest themselves? They have a wall. Well, the wall is this compound called chitin. Now, you might know that, that chitin is found in insect exoskeletons, like if you've seen a bee or something that's that's uh, mummified, it's, it's a kind of that crunchy thing, or a shrimp, as you peel the shrimp, that's chitin. It's kind of like a cell wall, isn't it? It's structural. It's beta glucose, just like, like glucose, sorry, starch. However, it's not just glucose, it's glucose amine. And there's an amine group right there, so that little lollipop is the amine group, makes it different, and those are all the amine groups. It's got hydrogen bonds, just like, just like uh, cellulose, so it's very similar to cellulose. It's like animal cellulose. <clears throat> so they can't digest themselves. The fungi can't digest themselves. Okay. So here's a leaf that's been skeletonized. So what's happened is that all the, the easy parts have been digested. What's left are the hard parts to still digest. And um, so um, cellulase, actually, the enzymes that digest cellulose, its whole family of enzymes, and three main types. There's endoglucanases, which are, they, they can break the, the cellulose molecule from the inside. And then there's these exocellulases, like cellohydrobiolase, biohydrolase, that can break the ends of it off. And then there's beta-glucosidase that just really gets just singles off the ends. This will be important in, in a minute. Okay, here's the lignin. Let's talk about that for a minute. Complex polymer of phenolic um, compounds. Uh, the word comes from wood, lignum, Latin. Uh, it's the most abundant, second most abundant carbon compound uh, on Earth, cellulose being the first. So it's, it's, it's a carbon source. It's a potential carbon source for food. Very important stuff. It strengthens the wall, adds rigidity, protects from fungal and insect attack, of course. And here are the phenolic compounds that go into making this um, huge molecule. And again, like cellulose, if, if, if I showed you the whole molecule, it would be 10,000 times this big, this huge complex group of phenolic compounds. But look at all those carbons, potential food source. Uh, softwoods just have these two. Hardwoods have these two. So you can look at chemically and tell whether you're looking at lignin from a pine tree or lignin from an oak tree. Just kind of